In metal extraction, a vast majority of metallurgical reactions take place at high temperatures, because at high temperatures the ore compounds become relatively unstable, facilitating the release of valuable metal. This is the basis of pyrometallurgy. Pyrometallurgy is a branch of extractive metallurgy that deals with the extraction and purification of metals by heat-based methods. Therefore, pyrometallurgy can be defined as the treatment of ores at high temperatures to affect their conversion to raw metals or intermediate compounds for additional finishing. It is a high temperature technique that is used to extract and purify valuable metals through physical and chemical transformation. During pyrometallic processing, an ore after being beneficiated is calcined or roasted. The concentrate is then smelted in a furnace to fuse the desired metals into an impure molten metal. This molten metal then undergoes the final pyrometallic process to refine the metal to the desired level of purity. Each time the ore or molten metal is heated, waste materials are created. Because the operating temperature is usually near 1500 degrees Celsius or more, pyrometallurgical processes are difficult, high risk, and energy intensive. Pyrometallurgical processes are generally grouped into the following categories. 1. Calcining. 2. Roasting. 3. Smelting. 4. Refining. Calcining. Calcining, also known as calcination, is the process in which the ore of a metal is heated to a high temperature in the absence or limited supply of air or oxygen to remove volatile substances, oxidize a portion of the mass, or render them friable. Calcining is typically carried out at a temperature lower than the melting point of the pure metal. Therefore, it is sometimes considered a process of purification. The process of calcination derives its name from the Latin word calcinare, meaning to burn lime. The calcining process is carried out in a variety of furnaces, including shaft furnaces, rotary kilns, and fluidized bed reactors. A typical example is the manufacture of lime from limestone. In this process, the limestone is brought to a temperature high enough to expel the carbon dioxide, producing the lime in a highly friable or easily powdered condition. Some other common examples of calcination are decomposition of hydrated minerals, that is the calcination of bauxite and gypsum, involving the removal of water of crystallization as water vapor. Decomposition of volatile components contained in raw petroleum coke, removal of ammonium ions in the synthesis of zeolites, devitrification of glass material or obtaining rutile from anatase etc. In summary, Calcination consists of the thermal decomposition of calcium ores. During the process, carbon dioxide is given out as a byproduct. Moisture is also removed from the ore during calcination. In some cases, the calcination of a metal results in oxidation of the metal to produce a metal oxide. Roasting. Roasting is a metallurgical process involving gas solid reactions at elevated temperature with the goal of purifying the metal components. Roasting is usually used in metallurgy to extract metal oxides mainly from sulfide ores. In roasting, the ore is heated in a regular supply of air in a furnace at a temperature below the melting point of the metal. This transforms sulfide ores into oxides while the sulfur escaping as sulfur dioxide. The solid product from roasting is often called calcine. Roasting differs from calcining in that in calcining, the chemical change involving limestone or other carbonate ore is accomplished through the application of heat in the absence of air, whereas roasting entails an interaction between gas and the solid ore in the presence of air. The process is generally applied to sulfide minerals. The following equations are examples of roasting. There are different types of roasting, each one intended to produce a specific reaction and to yield a roasted product suitable for the particular processing operation to follow. They are 1. Oxidizing roasts. The most common example of roasting is the oxidation of metal sulfide ores. The metal sulfide is heated in the presence of air to a temperature that allows the oxygen in the air to react with the sulfide to form sulfur dioxide gas and solid metal oxide. In oxidizing roasting, if the temperature and gas conditions are such that the sulfide feed is completely oxidized, the process is known as dead roasting. Sometimes in the case of pre-treating reverberatory or electric smelting furnace feed, the roasting process is performed with less than the required amount of oxygen to fully oxidize the feed, 
In this case, the process is called partial roasting because the sulfur is only partially removed. 2. Sulfatizing roasting converts certain metals from sulfides to sulfates. If the temperature and gas conditions are controlled such that the sulfide feeds react to form metal sulfates instead of metal oxides, the process is known as sulfatizing or sulfation roasting. 3. Reducing roasting lowers the oxide state or completely reduces an oxide to a metal. 4. Chloridizing roasting, also known as chlorination, changes metallic oxides to chlorides by heating with a chlorine source such as chlorine gas, hydrochloric acid gas, ammonium chloride, or sodium chloride. 5. Volatilizing roasting, eliminate volatilized oxides by converting them to gases. Each of the processes is exothermic and can be carried out in specialized roasters such as fluidized beds, multiple hearths, rotary kilns, chlorinators, and sintering machine. Roasting depends on the following factors. They are time, temperature, availability of oxygen or air, physical conditions, etc. Smelting. Smelting is a pyrometallurgical process that extracts metals from ores, by heating them to high temperatures under the influence of a reducing agent such as carbon or coke. Smelting is a heat-driven method whose main goal is to separate the metal from unwanted materials like oxides and silicates in the ore. Examples of smelting include iron extraction from iron ore, as well as copper and other base metal extraction from their ores. Before smelting iron, the ore often gets smashed and ground up to make it work better with the reducing agent. This process makes it more effective when it comes into contact with the reducing agent. For ores with sulfur, roasting is carried out. Depending on the kind of metal being extracted, and the specific heat requirements of the process, the prepared iron ore is fed into a furnace. This can be a blast furnace, reverberatory furnace, or electric arc furnace. These furnaces' temperatures get as high as 1200 degrees Celsius to 1600 degrees Celsius. This high temperature is important for reducing the iron ore into its elemental form. The metal oxides react with the reducing agent, usually charcoal or coke, resulting in the formation of metallic elements as well as carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide. Other material such as flux is added to aid the melting of the oxide ores and assist in the formation of slag, as the flux reacts with impurities such as silicon compounds. As the reduction continues, the heavy metal produced from the ore sinks to the bottom of the furnace. The lighter impurities called slag float to the surface due to their lower density. Refining. Refining is the process of reducing the impurities of the metal. It is the final procedure for removing the last small amount of impurities left after the major extraction steps have been completed. Refining leaves the major metallic element in a practically pure state for commercial applications. There are several methods used in the purification of metal. The refining method to be chosen will depend on the physical and chemical properties of the metal. They are 1. Liquation refining 2. Poling refining 3. Distillation refining 4. Electrolytic refining 5. Chromatography refining 6. Zone refining, etc. Liquation Easily fusible metals like tin, lead, etc. are refined by this process. In this method, the impure metal is poured on the sloping hearth of a reverberatory furnace and heated slowly to a temperature little above the melting point of the metal. The pure metal drains out leaving behind the infusible impurities. Poling. Poling is a method used for metals that have oxidized impurities to purify them. Poling involves stirring the impure molten metal with green logs or bamboo. The hydrocarbon contained in the pole reduce any metal oxide present as impurity. Poling is mainly used to purify metals that are in the impure form like copper oxide or tin oxide. Distillation. This particular technique is used for metals that possess a high degree of volatility and exhibit a low boiling point. Volatile metals like zinc and mercury are purified by distillation. They easily vaporize while heating them, leaving behind their impurities. Electrolytic refining. Electrolytic refining is the most common and widely used method because it applies to most metals. In electrolytic refining, different electrochemical properties of the metals and the impurities are used. This process involves the use of impure metal alongside a strip of pure metal. In electrolytic refining, 
The impure metal is the anode and the pure metal is the cathode. The substance undergoes immersion in an electrolytic solution that consists of a soluble set comprised of identical metals. On passing the current, the pure metal deposits in the cathode sheet while more electropositive impurities are left in the solution. Less electropositive, mainly precious noble metals, do not dissolve and fall away from the anode to settle down at the base of the anode as anode mud. Chromatography refining. Chromatography mainly deals with the movement of components at different rates in a mixture and the degree of absorption by an absorbent. The technique involves the placement of a metal sample containing impurities into a medium, which can either be liquid or gaseous. Then the medium is moved through an absorbent. Various components will exhibit varying level of absorption for the impure metal, and these components are removed by using a suitable solvent. Various chromatographic methods include column chromatography, thin layer chromatography, and gas liquid chromatography. Zone refining. This technique is a specialized method employed for the purification of metals. In this method, metals are purified to a very high degree. A metal rod that is not pure is introduced into a container that is filled with an inert gas. Then a circular heater is placed around the rod at the top for heating the impure metal. When the heater moves to the subsequent zone, the pure metal undergoes a cooling process and undergoes crystallization. The impurities that are melted will move along with the movement of the heater and shift to the next zone. All these impurities are then collected in the last zone and then they can be separated.